afternoon, everybody. This is the Two Old Farts. My name is Chuck. I'm Lou. I'm the feeling better part of the Two Old Farts. Hey, you look see pretty good. Look, look at this. Floors Country Store, huh? Yeah, see that shirt. What's on the back? What's on the back? Can you see it? The customer is always wrong here. That's right. But for the being customer. wrong, we had pretty good service here. Yeah, we had pretty good service. That lady liked your mom good enough. She gave her a free drink, huh? Yeah, she did. <laughs> Yep, my, my mom definitely enjoys free. That was better than paying the seventy dollars we paid down at the football game. We got a lot more out of it. Oh my God, seventy dollars, <laughs> two beers, and two things of tacos, which was basically just some street tacos for each of us. Seventy. You got to pay for the experience, right? Whoo! That was a lot of experience we paid for. <laughs> but that show was a good show. I want to yeah. have a renewed, what you want to call it, for a Blackberry Smoke. I will tell you. What, they're, they just get better with time, or I'm, I'm just getting old and don't, don't hear good or something. But I really enjoyed their concert. I yeah. thought it was pretty good. Um, it was definitely, in mine and Brenda's opinion, uh, a lot better than the last time they were here. Not that it was bad then. It just seemed like, I don't know, they were more lively. The crowd was definitely larger and more lively. Yeah. I don't, it was just a different vibe. They were feeling it. The crowd was feeling it. Everybody was having a great time. And their music, it's just good rock and roll country music. You yeah. can just sit back, have a drink, and just enjoy yourself. You know, your mom and I are talking. It's amazing, you know, to she and I, that how many people know the words to all the songs and stuff. Hell, I can't even remember one. But it's no different than when you were that age. Yeah. And, you know, the music that you listen to. You know Johnny Cash. You know Waylon Jennings and and Willie and all that. You know those lyrics. It's no different. Oh, oh you know, at least some of them. But yeah, I tell you what, I, I I really enjoyed their music. I don't know why. Maybe this time I'm. I don't know. Just I it just it was just fun. It was good. Well, I I think a lot of it has to do with who you were at a younger age. You felt like this is who I am and this is the box that I have to be in. And as you're coming out of this box and being exposed to newer things, it takes time to get to know it and appreciate it and love it. Like the first time I took you to Jamie Johnson after the concert, you were like, yeah, it was okay. <clears throat> A couple of years later, you act like you just discovered Jamie Johnson. He was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I'm like, dad, I took you there a couple of years ago. He goes, I know, I know. But man, yeah. I, it, that, it, it's like it takes time for you to find it for yourself, I think. Yeah, you know, and it's strange. Now, he's he's a regular on the Grand Ole Opry and all that kind of stuff. And everybody talks about how they're playing with Jamie Johnson or how he sets on with, with their group and, you know, and, and stuff like that. But, yeah, but he's not as big as you would think he would be, as many people at, that talk about him. Exactly. He's, he's he's not Chris Stapleton big. He's definitely not Kenny Chesney big. No, but you sure hear a lot out of me. I mean, a lot of these folks talk about the sessions with Jamie Johnson. And even though I listen to Sirius XM and uh, Willie's Roadhouse, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And they're talking about him all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, the, Because so, he's such a throwback. Really hey, I think he froze up on me. You still there? Uh -oh. Hey. Old man, you still there? Well, I'm here. I, it said it was trying to connect to the internet. I don't know what the hell was yeah, going on. Yeah, you froze on me. Hmm? <laughs> I told, I'm telling you, technology is going to be the death of us. <laughs> it just goes what we've been talking about the last couple of times, this internet stuff and, and the connections. It's, it's, got us, it's got us by the... By the short curlies? But you were, you were talking about Jamie Johnson and all the people playing with him, and, and yeah, then you froze just, on us. Yeah, I just hear you know, like on Sirius on the Willie's Roadhouse, uh, on that network, so all these guys talk about him, sitting with him in sessions and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty neat. But you're right. You don't hear that much out of him nationally as much as you would think with somebody talk about somebody like that all the time. Yep. Yeah. And, and like we were talking about at the concert, you know, that Jamie Johnson and Blackberry Smoke, when they were young and up-and-comers, Played with George Jones and redid um, Yesterday's Wine. Yeah. And that was like one of the first songs that I introduced you to Blackberry Smoke and Jamie Johnson years ago. I'm like, yeah. you need to check these guys out. And 
seeing them with George Jones, I think, gave them instant credibility in your eyes. I'm just glad these guys still come around. I'm, I'm glad that uh, Flores and some of these venues can get them every now and then. But I'm going to tell you, that was a huge crowd out there. It was I thought packed. Clay Walker had a big crowd, but I think this one had a beat. It definitely looked uh, a lot tighter and more packed in, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it's, like I said several times, it's fun going to Flores. It, as a general rule, uh, it's pretty well behaved. I mean, nobody really gets out of line. Uh, mm -hmm. Most everybody's kind of friendly and stuff. And, and the service from Flores, it, to me, is just top notch. I, I haven't had a bad experience there. And we've been going a long time, or I can't remember one. And, yeah, we've and been that, going over 10 years. Yeah, and that young lady that was, you know, serving in our area, well, she was busy. Yeah, she was. And, you know, that was the funny thing, those two reserved tables, nobody ever came. Nobody came. But there was no names on them. So I don't know if they were for the artist or the promoter, it, but there was no names on them, which means yeah. Floors did not sell those tables. Yeah, because you would think if, if it hadn't sold, they would have sold them sometimes during the show. Somebody would have bought them, you know. All you had to do is mention that they're for sale, yeah, and people will buy them. That's a good, that's a, it's a good experience, and you, you pay a little bit more up there, but you get a good view, you get the service, you know, you clean restrooms in that area. Oh, your mom exactly. Could see, your mom could see she had a light in there. She, <laughs> she didn't fall and get a big bruise on her arm like that last time. Oh, in the porta potty. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Anyway. You know what? I need to, I need to buy some chemical lights, those little chem lights where you crack them and, and, and take and take some to the concert the next time that we have to yeah. go to the porta potty. Like, you you have to walk behind her and throw it in because she wouldn't take it. I can see. <laughs> yeah, but you're her seeing eye dog. You have to go with her every time she goes to the bathroom. Anyway, did you watch any of the, the football draft? Uh, yesterday, Brenda had to go um, help her mom a little bit. And so... I had a heck of a time trying to find the replay of the first round of the of the draft. I found it on YouTube. I couldn't find it on ESPN. I couldn't, you know, they had rounds two and three, and then they had uh, the rest of the stuff going live, but I could not find the draft day, you know, round one draft. I, had to, I found it on um, YouTube, and I watched, whew, I don't know, through five or six. It was pretty good. Uh... I don't know. Just for me, I just wasn't excited, and it maybe it had to do with Saban retiring, and maybe it had to do with us, you know, not getting out of the first round of the championship. You know, losing to Michigan. You know, I I think that just kind of soured me a bit on you know the hype of the NFL. But we had ten players again go into the draft. Ten players again. That's what. How many years in a row now? Been That's, been a lot. The only team that beat us was Michigan, and was it Georgia again? Let's see. Uh, or was Michigan it had State? thirteen. Texas had eleven, and we had that was two. It. it was it was Texas that beat us. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, hey, and but we set some records. Who the first kicker drafted since nineteen? Oh yeah, we, Will Reichard. Yep, yeah. he went way down the line with it. Somebody, and. Are one of our players the first time since uh, the seventies? I think Mister Irrelevant, uh, yeah. the cornerback. We had uh, Georgia holds the most record for, uh, for draft selections in first, yeah, 15, in the first round. But yeah. my, uh, Miami is tied with us for second place with six in the first round. We had what three in the first round this year? Yes, three, and, and that's still pretty good. It but, is. That, that, but you know what? That also shows, in my opinion, and I think in a lot of other um, Alabama nation, that there has been a drop off, a decline yeah. in the talent. And I think it is mostly attributable to the coaching. The, the fact that the coaches have been raided out of our, you know, out of our hen house gone other places and he can't get consistency in there. And, and I'm telling you, since, since we lost Sarkeesian and um, God, what was uh, the uh, Ole Miss coach uh, Lane Kiffin? Since Lane we Kiffin, lost yeah. those two, there has been a distinct drop off in our offensive production. Well, defense goes back further than that. If, when we lost Kirby, defense hasn't been nowhere near 
at the level when, when Kirby was there. Yeah, um, it, it picked back up when we had that guy for one year. I cannot remember his name. He came from New England, spent one year as our, head, our defensive coordinator, then he went to Buffalo. Right. But he was only there for one year, and it, yeah. it, it picked up after that. Um, the, the cat we had from uh, UTSA, he did okay for a couple of years, but the defense, it just wasn't quite up to the standard of Nick Saban was always a front seven kind of a guy. But, you know, he, Saban has 47 first-round picks in his career, 41 at Alabama, uh, which is more than Joe Paterno and, and a lot of the others, you know. But he's had 44 first-round picks out of 129 players. So he leads that in that area. Uh, um, in this past Super Bowl, there, there was a lot of Alabama players on both sides of the ball. Yeah, if you're looking for, at players that started one year or more at Alabama, 2010, 2017, 55% were drafted. Next best school is Ohio State at 45, then the Gators and FSU at 43, and LSU at 41. So for 17 years at Alabama, he six national championships. and just, Our first our first Heisman. Yep. Yep. Bryce Young, our first Heisman, uh, number one overall pick. Um, Mark Ingram. So Ingram was our first Heisman pick. Mm-hmm. Mark Ingram. Yes. He was our first. You're right. First highest win quarterback, I guess I should say. Or first quarterback to go first. Well, yeah, but know. we also had uh, Smitty. He got uh, the Heisman. Well, I was just going to say, we had a couple birthdays this week. Snake, Leroy Jordan. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Now, that was a ball player. He was one of my favorites. Jordan Le- or Stabler? Leroy Jordan. Well, I can't even say it with you, but Leroy. You know, Bear Bryant is a little Leroy. If he stayed between the sidelines, Leroy would get him. <laughs> you know, he he did pretty good with the Cowboys too. I loved the Cowboys back then. Uh, yeah, so, when when uh, bef- before Jerry Jones bought the team, I think a lot of people liked the Cowboys, and I think yeah. now, you know, I don't know. Yeah, uh, just but when you're the owner, you can do what you want to do, right? Yeah, to the detriment of your fan base and the team. But that's what makes it fun and makes it what you want to watch and. I saw this funny cartoon yesterday that's talking about somebody that said, we don't need a number one pick. So we got, and they showed Jerry Jones with a, with a helmet and a jersey and the shoulder pads on with number 14. <laughs> said, we got him. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Anyway, so what did you think of the draft? I thought I thought we did pretty good. Uh, I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to it this year. I just, I didn't, I didn't think we'd do as good as we did because we didn't have any really name players that you hear consistent. You had Braswell, um, you had Riker, Turner. You yes, know, Turner. A uh, couple more, but but to come up with 10 in, in the whole draft, I thought I thought we did real well. I'm going to tell you, I'm excited about what's coming. I, everything that I see makes me really excited for the fall. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to see how we do. And, uh what I hear from the players, now talk is cheap, but what I hear from the players and stuff like that, it, it sounds pretty exciting. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Save It on Game Day. I didn't read that one article, but I, uh, some people had some, some good things to say about him, I guess. There's a couple of players that didn't like some of the things he said about him. But Well, you know, that's what he gets paid to do. And uh, Absolutely. So. But he was really high on Jaden Daniels, the quarterback yes, out of LSU. He was super high on him. Yeah, and I I think rightfully so. I thought he was a, a good ball player. I wish he had played with us, but oh, he'd have been a Heisman winner. And we and we probably uh, would have had some better receivers, and I think we might have uh, gone a little bit deeper in the yeah. uh, the CFP. But it was nice to see Jerome Burton get uh, drafted pretty high. Yeah, uh, as one of our receivers. So next year it's going to be kind of like starting all over again. We don't really Jalen Milrow and. A couple others you don't have a lot of name brand uh, players that you normally would have from year to year talking about going into the next year and stuff like that. But seeing him at the A-Day game, he's got much better touch and control, and I think that's going to make up with those younger receivers, I think, yeah. with him. That uh, maturation process with him, I think it's going to translate onto the field with those receivers, and I think he's going to build some chemistry. Yeah. 
And I think having Ty Simpson uh, with the improvement he's made at oh, quarterback, man. Like I think that's going to help us too. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so too. So we've got some uh, depth on the bench if, you know, God forbid something happens to Milrow. Well, and I look at it a, a different way too. I, I think it puts some pressure on Milrow to – pressure may not be the right word. I think he'll probably come out and play better than he probably has because I think he's going to be out to prove some things. He wants to go high in the draft and – and he knows you got somebody on the bench that come in and replace you pretty quick if you're not careful from everything that you can see so far. Yeah, we we just got to get some uh, some wide receivers and some D backs, and um, I think we're going to be great. Uh, yeah. The line on both sides looks good. Linebackers look good. Uh, the running backs, oh my god, we are stacked from top to bottom, man. We got like a four or five headed monster back there, and I, we I, haven't I had that in a in a while now. Exactly. Yeah, and the other thing, too, Washington had quite a few players drafted. So that, that kind of talks about the coach, at, you know, leaving Washington coming to, to us and you know, his ability to develop players and, and how they did what they did and stuff like that. So uh, uh, it's going to be an exciting year. Yeah, the Falcons. Uh, your Falcons took uh, Michael Penix Jr. I think that's a good – I think that's good for them. Falcons, I think so, too. I, I You know, I – felt the sorriest for Michael Penix Jr. last year. And and I'm sure you remember me talking about how he was always the, probably the most underrated out of all of the top-rated quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody gave him any love or respect. Everybody's talking about Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams. And I'm like, what has he done other than a name? Right. He's not winning games. Penix Jr.'s winning games, and he's winning them with Washington. And his – I, I just like this play. I, I, I'm excited for the Falcons. I think that's good for them. I'm not sure if he'll start, but I'll tell you what, he'll put some pressure on them, and I think by the end of the season, he will start. I haven't really – I like the Falcons. I haven't really looked into any of the teams on how they did on the draft and you know, and stuff like that. So it's, it'd be fun. Oh, I think so, too. I, I think that was a heck of a move for the Falcons to get him. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, it, it always amazes me the top team, top two teams seems to always put the put the most players in the draft, don't they? Yep. But you know what's strange though is the Falcons just gave Kirk Cousins that huge uh, deal, and then they turn around and they draft Penix, which means I think they're looking at backing up their investment. I think that's a good move on the Falcons' part. And you know who else they drafted? Dallas Turner. Yep. So that's going to help them on defense. Uh, Falcons looking pretty good. The team that I'm surprised and not, you don't hear much about it anymore is, has been uh, New England. Yeah, they were very quiet. Yep. So, I don't know if that's good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah, but, where did Bo Nix go? Did he went to Tampa? No. Uh, hmm. Or did he go to Broncos? Uh, you know, I don't remember. I think he went to Denver. And I'm happy for him. I, I think he was somewhat underrated in some, in some respects. Uh, I think him leaving Auburn and going out to the West Coast was probably good for him. What was it, Oregon? Yeah, he was at Oregon. Yeah. Uh, I always thought he was a pretty good, pretty good quarterback when he was at Auburn. So we'll see. It's it's be a good year. I think so. So yeah, we will see. I don't know about Chicago and Caleb Williams. I just wasn't a fan of him. Yeah, I know. I I don't remember too much about it, but Detroit seems to be uh, have done pretty good in the draft and. There's been some conversation about some of their picks and in, in the last couple of years how they've uh, they kind of turned it around. Yeah, so it'd be interesting to see. You. And the Eagles, I think the Eagles did pretty good too. They drafted a couple of a couple of ball players and so backing up their talent and stuff. So it's, it's going to be a good season, I think. I think Eagles and Detroit both will probably be pretty strong last year. Of course, the Eagles. Got to replace what the center, you know, so it's, it'll be good. Now it's, it just seems like there's another big like ugh, like football. Now we got to wait. <laughs> now we got to wait. You know, the draft is over. Fo- college football's over. Spring the spring games are over. It's like damn, we got to find something else to talk about besides Alabama, man. <laughs> well, we got the, we got the College World Series softball coming up pretty soon, and, and we got the baseball little league World Series pretty soon, and. In about another month or so in June, then I May. thought the Little League World Series was in August. Yes, right in August. Then we got the uh, 
and that's months away. The college softball World Series up in uh, Oklahoma will be what June, May, end of May, June, first I part think. of June. I think so it's in June. I was watching Georgia and Florida a while ago. Georgia, Florida was leading two to nothing for a long time. Then all of a sudden, Georgia got and they were leading. Then in the seventh inning, Florida went on a tear, and it was. When I turned it off to go to the bathroom, it was like ten to two, <laughs> ten to four. A grand slam, a three-run homer, and then a single homer. And the next thing you know, the base is loaded. I like watching those kind of ball games and stuff. It gets excited. And, oh yeah. Anyway, I got some stuff for you. What you got for me, old man? You don't raise heroes. You raise sons. And if you treat them like sons, they'll turn out to be heroes, even if it's just in your own eyes. That's okay. you. I like oh, it. I'm proud of you and what you do and the awards you just achieved here uh, recently at uh, at Lycan for the work you do. And another one I like is the years will rush by, and by one day you'll be watching your son as a man and feeling incredibly proud that he is caring, safe, making a contribution, and hopefully going far beyond you in the scope of his life. To see you when you're at home, going up to that gas station, kicking your ass, Get up, because you're drunk. <laughs> Not one of my finest moments. <laughs> then to see where you're at now, and in, in that conversation we had about, I want to help them list it. Well, I said, get your degree, get your commission. So what'd you do? You went to warrant school. Uh-huh. Came out of there, and you made one, two, three, and four. If I remember correctly, pretty much on time in all four. Uh, yeah, I made I made it when I was supposed to make it, and I was. Uh... Well, on my way to W-5 when I retired. And I had a shot at five, but then you had to make a decision. You know, and I still do not regret that decision. Do I? I still don't regret it. No. You, you, you told no, me when it, you said you, you will know when you it's time to, to retire. And you make decisions based on what your family needs. And that's what makes me proud of it. But like I said, I, I, I wasn't excited. And to, to be nominated for W-5 by your assignment manager, you know, like, hey, we got this W-5 job and we think you'd be great for it. And then you just aren't excited to take it. That's when you know it's time to go. Yep, you do. And that's what all through my whole career, I ask people, how do you know? And they always say, you'll know. And, you know, and then one day I got up, I just went straight to personnel. Didn't even go to work. And I told this lady, I want to retire. She said, when? I said, today. She said, we can't quite do it that quick. That was in October and January 1st of 83. It was official, but, you know, and there's another one. I, I got a lot of sayings here about you and, and your sister. Giving your son a skill that's better than giving him 1,000 pieces of gold. Oh, I Chinese believe that. Problem. Yeah, if you would have your son to walk on me through the world, you must not attempt to clear the stones from his path, but teach him to walk firmly over them. Not assist upon leading him by the hand, but let him learn to go along. That's you. Of all the ones I read, I think that one describes you the best. I remember back in Georgia with your Suzuki, going through those two damn pine trees. I thought you were going to kill yourself because they're just inches on each side of the uh, the handlebars you did go through, you jumped over that cliff down there, and I saw. Oh, I don't think them trees were quite as close as you make them out to be, but they—I they, mean, they were—they were just on the other side of the path that I, you know, would go up the, you know, get get some air, you know, whee, lay that motorcycle down. I had fun. I, I loved that motorcycle. I was, yes, you did, and that was probably the the best gift I had ever ever gotten, and I had the most enjoyment out of it. We'd probably still have that motorcycle if your mom had left me alone. It well, got I, got out. I got too big for it, you know, when we moved it to It got Texas. sold out, out of our backyard. Out of the, you know. Yep. But you and found it. You got it back. Out, going by like that place where we were rent from. I saw that boy ride it down that, across that field. And I went up chasing him. And I told your mom, open the door and knock him down. I was going to open the door and knock him off that damn motorcycle. Yeah, I remember that story. <laughs> but we got it back. Yep. So, uh, another one I liked is let your boys test their wings. They may not be eagles, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't soar free. That is so true. It's hard not to tell you what to do and, and make you do and stuff like that. 
but you, you got to learn from those mistakes. You got to go out and do the things that, that you want to do and have fun. And uh, it is hard to. It's hard as a parent to, to do, to let your children fail, to know they're going to fail. Yep. Yeah, but they're what they have to, how, how do you learn if you don't, if you don't fall, you got to learn how to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and go at it again. And the thing about it is you have to learn from those mistakes. And that's one of the things I can give you credit for. You learn from your mistakes. I, 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 I can't recall a single time you just sent the same dumb shit twice in a row. I don't know, two or three times. I'm sure you probably have. But if you did, it was probably insignificant or you would remember it. Now, your mom would probably remember everything. Yeah, she, she don't forget anything. She don't forget nothing. <laughs> Jesus may forgive, but a woman never forgets. Here's another one of my favorites. When a father gives to his son, both laugh. When a son gives to his father, both cry. That is so true, you know. Because when it comes from you to the to a father, you know it's coming from the heart. You know, well, and that's so. you come from the heart. You you give from mm -hmm. the heart. And that's that's why I enjoy doing so much with you because we have so much fun. And it wasn't always like that growing up. We were bumping heads even as adults. When you know me coming up, we would bump heads. Well, you know, it goes back that you, you watch them grow up. You don't want them to make the same mistakes you did. You know, and sometimes you want to get them in the right path and you're not sure how to do it. So you go back to how you were treated when you grew up. And sometimes that's not always the best way. No. You know, different individuals, different times. That doesn't make any of them bad or, or good or, or anything like that. It's just. That's just the way life is, and that's how we learn from those kind of things. Like like we were talking about Friday, your dad, how your dad was with you was not the same way he was with me. Yeah. Completely different. Yeah. I was like well, the little prince that could do no wrong. Yeah, you know, a lot of different reasons. You're the first grandson, you know, and I don't have any grandsons, but I'm as proud of my granddaughters as I would be if I had grandsons. You know, hey, me either. I don't have any grand grandsons either. Yeah, you know, so. But I remember your grandfather, Bob Charbonneau, how proud he was of you, too. Yes, you had, you had two fathers, even though you know, I remember him. It was a big deal to him want to give you his first haircut, your first haircut. <laughs> now, what your mom wanted. But you know what? To me, that was important because that's what he wanted. And that's what made him happy. You know, and that's what life's all about. It's yeah. just hair. It grows back, right? Absolutely. Well, in most cases. Sometimes when you get older, it don't grow back as fast. Start yeah. losing a little bit on top. Yeah, sometimes it just it's a little uneven on the sides. And it makes it look worse when your hair is the color that ours is. You can really see, you know. Well, you got your Uncle Ruben's hair. He's always gray. I don't, I don't ever remember seeing any other color on Uncle Ruben. Uh, you know, I used to think you were always gray. And um, not too long ago, uh, our good friend, my childhood friend, David, he had sent some pictures. And uh, there were some pictures, I guess, when he had come to visit or that we had sent him. I don't remember. But I was in high school and there were pictures of you and your hair was almost as black as your T-shirt there. Mm -hmm. Not quite, but it was still pretty dark. So you were in your 40s at that point. Mm -hmm. And it was still pretty dark. Now. My hair in my forties look pretty much like this. Yeah, maybe maybe a little more brown than than the silver and white, but I mean I pretty much look like this since my what late thirties. And that that's your your grandfather's and uh, side of the family, uh, Uncle Reuben, and probably Papa would have been that color too if he didn't color yeah. it all the time. Probably you know, and stuff like that. I got one more to share with you. All right. Next time, we're going to talk about your sister and daughters and maybe granddaughters. Okay. Every father should remember that one day his son will follow his example rather than his advice. Well, I, you never really gave me any advice um, on what to do in my life. The only advice that I can ask for that I got, and it was from you and Brenda's father, both of you all, it was before, I, was while I was still stationed in Germany, right around the time when Brenda and I were getting married, I was coming up on that crossroads. I was going to hit 10 years in the Army, or close to 11, and it was re-enlistment time. And I was really thinking about getting out of the Army. 
because I remember mom's mom telling me, she said, you know, when you hit 20, you're working for half pay. Well, also, if you're one day over 10, you might as well do 20, right? Because you're closer yeah. to retirement than you are when you started. But I also remember both you and, and Brenda's dad both told me, look, I can't tell you what to do, but this is what I would say if it was for me. You're not going to regret getting that retirement check at the end of the, you know. Yeah. You, you've, already, you've already gone halfway. Uh, you're, you're already yeah. halfway up. Yeah, the other half, you, and you still go be young. You got at twenty. The average person is probably about thirty-eight, or something like that. And you know, I don't, I don't regret staying in, and that's probably because I listened to my wife, and I and I put in my warrant officer packet, and I got selected, and uh, I think I I did pretty well. I think I had a pretty good career. Well, I think you did damn well. I, I am really proud of you. Yeah. You got that going down and. and uh, if I remember correctly, me and Brenda pin your uh, first warrant bar on you mm -hmm. at, at Fort Rucker. Then off, you just so many different amazing things and uh, all the stuff you've done and place you're and then where you're at now. Uh, you know this this latest award that you got as a civilian of the quarter. Now you're going up for the next level, and that's what the second time or third time that you've been civilian of the quarter. I can't remember. In this unit, yeah, I think it's like the third time. Yeah. But so, uh, that a few speaks, other times in the past. And that speaks volume of, of you. It speaks volume about Brenda. Having a wife that loves you. Puts up with you. You're right. And they put up with us. And that's, that's a huge difference. And sometimes we don't give them credit. That's why it's such a big deal with me, with the DAV, working that we do more to support the spouses and children of and our women veterans, because on the short end of the stick, uh, most of the time. Uh, so if you're a veteran out there, and talk to your lawmakers and, and make sure that we do the things that not only support our veterans, but we need to support the spouse and the children more uh, benefit-wise. They shouldn't have to endure hardships uh, later on in life down the road and stuff like that. Okay. Well, we don't want to end on a sour note, but we, we've gone way over time. Well, I'll, I'll leave you with one final thought. When your son grows up, become his brother. You know, and I think you are. I think we, we go out and we have a good time. I do, and that's, that's one of the things I really enjoy about what we do. And I keep all those little armbands and things like that with guys, it's just members and it's, it's not like I'm taking my son out, going out with my son. It's like when me and Gene would go do things, you know. And so anyway, I, I'm very proud of you. Well, thank you. I'm proud of you, too. I just yeah. wanted to be half the man that you were. Well, I don't know about that. Sometimes I got half here and I got half over here. I'm not sure where the hole comes in from. <laughs> comes in down here. <laughs> All right. But it's been a good one. Yeah, it has. Uh, we got we got to go do some more things. Yeah, we got. I guess we got some things coming up here pretty soon. Nothing for us in, in, a, in a near future, I don't think. Yeah, we got um, May. No, June. We got June. We got uh, Molly Hatchet. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, I don't think you and I have anything going on in May. We got Molly Hatchet in June and George Thorogood in June. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that one. I know you love some George Thorogood. Yeah. And then in July, we got Aaron Lewis. Well, they got some good things coming up. Yeah, we do. I'm looking forward to that George Thorogood. I, I, when we went to that one, I'm going to tell you, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I knew it was going to be good, but it was a whole lot better than what I thought. Kind of thinks, make, make me think a little bit about what went through this past weekend with Blackberry Smoke, that kind of music. And Maybe if you would just time. trust me when I tell you you'll like it. Maybe you just trusted me. <laughs> That's true. Just trust me. All right. We'll give a shout out to your Aunt Carolyn. And hopefully one day we'll get her on here with us. Yeah, we've got to get her on the computer because we I still have yeah. not figured out how to get uh, the cable that can do the in and out on uh, the USB into my mixer. Yeah, I might talk to your Uncle Bobby. Maybe get him on one day. That'd be fun. All right. Yeah, I would. 
we might have to do a two part with him. I'm sure the interview will go so long. We'll have to chop it up into like pieces. <laughs> That's true. All right. All right. Love you, dad. Love you too, son. You have All a right. good one. All right. And Goodbye, everybody. You. Don't make me get my stick out. No, I won't. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Love you guys. Love you too. Love you guys.